automated grocery shopping, molecular drinks makers, robotic 3D print farms, expandable laptop displays and much more. This is MOSFET Weekly. Starting off with some automation news this week. Logistics giant Maersk has been exploring the use of drones and robots in its warehouse facilities. The company recently announced the use of Verity drones for warehouse inventory management. Here's what they said in a press release. Verity's warehouse drones navigate from pallet to pallet, collecting accurate inventory data in three dimensions by scanning barcodes at any height using onboard high-resolution cameras. The system requires one day of operator training, and the electric-powered drones return to the battery charging pad when necessary, operating on nights or weekends and without overhead lighting turned on. The drones take photos of SKUs on pallets to identify inventory errors, such as missing or misplaced pallets. They also posted a new video to their YouTube channel, showing robots designed by Fetch Robotics working alongside warehouse operators, which they say increases the speed of order shipping in fulfillment centres. And speaking of fulfillment centres, Silicon Valley startup Fulfill came out of stealth this week, announcing it has secured $60 million in financing for its automated same-day grocery fulfillment system. The platform says it can sort pick and bag orders without requiring any human staff during the whole process. It's kind of like a very big and complex vending machine. The company has partnered with the SaveMart companies and created what they call a dark store operating in Mountain View, California. Customers can order via the Lucky Now or DoorDash services and the system automatically picks the goods, bags them, then presents them to delivery drivers within minutes. Moving over to cars now. RideCell recently introduced a new empty vehicle car sharing feature where users can request a car that they want to temporarily drive using an app. The Oro system adds automation into the mix, so unlike robo-taxis, this service drives the car to the customer so they can get in and take over, driving to wherever they're going. When they're finished, they don't even need to park. They can just hop out and the car will automatically drive off to find a spot to wait for the next customer to come along. Since it is connected to RideCell's system, it already calculates which areas are likely to have the most activity and move there accordingly. In other driverless car news, Waymo recently announced they are expanding the testing of their robo-taxi service to Los Angeles. CEO Dmitry Dolgov recently tweeted, Following a rigorous cycle of validation and safety readiness evaluation, Waymo is starting fully autonomous testing in LA thrilled by the data confirming once again how well our ML-based fifth-gen driver generalizes across cities. In AI news, Google and Meta both recently presented various methods for augmenting robot training data with diffusion models. These three models, dubbed Rosie, GenOrg and Cacti, train robots with dynamically changing simulations, creating novel environments and scenarios in order to teach the bots to better deal with new situations. All three research papers, along with videos and more in-depth explanations, are all on their respective github.io pages. The proliferation of conversational AI chatbots continues. Three weeks after adding AI-powered search to Bing, Windows recently announced that it is also integrating the chatbot directly into the Windows 11 taskbar, allowing users to type questions in a more conversational tone and receive answers directly from the AI. The search box is one of the most widely used features on Windows, with over half a billion users every month, and now with the typable Windows search box and the new AI-powered Bing front and centre to this experience, you will be empowered to find the answers you're looking for faster than ever before. It's currently only available to those who are in the Bing preview program, but will be rolling out to everyone soon. In the meantime, those who want to test it out can sign up to the Bing waiting list. Microsoft have also been exploring whether you can use ChatGPT when controlling robots and drones too. The company's research division released a paper which extends ChatGPT's capabilities to robotic arms, drones and robotic home assistants, allowing people to interact with them using natural conversation. Our technical paper describes a series of design principles that can be used to guide language models towards solving robotics tasks. These include and are not limited to special prompting structures, high-level APIs, and human feedback via text. We believe that our work is just the start of a shift in how we develop robotic systems, and we hope to inspire other researchers to jump into this exciting field. And ending this section with something more light-hearted, 
I mentioned the Athen AI show a few weeks ago, where AI clones of well-known faces interact with the stream chat and each other. Since I last posted, the show has introduced a wide variety of new characters, including recently the famously acerbic deceased comedian George Carlin. This is one of the best with regards to voice likeness and personality. In one encounter, the comic was having a verbal sparring match with another well-known foul-mouthed Gordon Ramsay, and it was genuinely funny. On demand, local manufacturing is a trend we've been seeing a lot of lately, and this week is no exception. Ice hockey goods maker Bauer have teamed up with 3D printing experts EOS to create the React custom inserts for players' helmets. The Bauer React helmet is now available through select retailers that are part of the My Bauer product program. Customers will be able to visit the shops, have their heads scanned, then receive an individually printed foam insert which precisely fits them. Another example in an area we don't often see is beverages. The Kana one can create any drink at the user's request. The company calls it a molecular beverage printer and it combines regular tap water with their ingredient cartridge to create thousands of drinks on demand. Kana says that almost all drinks can be split into various base ingredients and that's what their replaceable cartridge provides. Once mixed in certain combinations, it can replicate a wide variety of beverages, from juices to soft drinks, iced coffee, wine or cocktails. The machine costs $900 and they say cartridges last about a month. And rounding out this section, here's an interesting example of how automation is allowing a 3D printing farm to take their service to the next level. Athena 3D provides an additive manufacturing service in Tempe, Arizona, and it is constantly running multiple printers simultaneously. In order to increase the amount of orders it could ship to customers, the company decided to use a robotic arm automation system which can remove prints, replace the bed and start the next order. This helped them to pump out almost twice as many parts, allowing them to leave the shop at the end of the workday and have this system work continuously throughout the night, so when they arrive the next day, they are greeted with orders ready to process. NVIDIA has introduced RTX Video Super Resolution 4K upscaling. Compatible with GeForce RTX 40 and 30 series GPUs, this system uses AI to upscale lower res content up to 4K, matching the user's display resolution. It can remove compression artifacts and improves video sharpness, allowing users to stream video at lower bit rates and still have crisp visuals. If you have a compatible GPU, you need to get the latest version of GeForce Game Ready Driver, and in order to automatically upscale video in your browser, you need the latest versions of Chrome or Edge, which recently updated to support RTX VSR. Last week at the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, Lenovo showed off two rollable display concepts. The details are pretty thin on the prototypes, but videos from Notebook Check show a laptop display growing from about 12 inches to 16, and a smartphone with an auto-expanding display. Speaking of display technology, researchers at Delft University and I Marseille University studied the use of ultrasound on glass to create a realistic illusion, where volunteers felt as if they were pressing a real mechanical button. This could potentially pave the way for higher quality haptic feedback systems in touchscreens. The system used lights to optically track the movement of an approaching finger, then once connected, a piezo let out an ultrasound burst at 28.85 kHz creating the illusion. Continuing on from the satellite smartphone trend from last week's video, Motorola have also entered the space, though they are approaching it from a slightly different angle. They announced the Motorola Defy Satellite Link, a compact Bluetooth accessory for Android and iOS devices, which lets phones connect to the Bullet Satellite Messenger to send two-way messages over satellite. The device is dust, water and drop-proof, and will be coming in the second half of this year. Continuing the trend of electric VTOL proliferation, Joby recently announced that their air taxi passed the second stage of FAA certification. In a recent video, head of aircraft OEM, DDA Papadopoulos explains that there are three remaining stages left before the air taxi can take to the skies, and these are all primarily based around stress testing components and making sure all fail-safe systems work as intended. The company is aiming to launch commercial passenger services by 2025. In other news, Autoflight announced that version 4 of its Prosperity E VTOL broke a new distance record for its class of aircraft with a single charge covering just over 250 kilometers. This record was set on February the 23rd 
when the air taxi completed 20 circuits of the Augsburg test base in Germany. This beats the previous 248 kilometer record set by Joby, who we just mentioned, which was set in 2021. Carrying on with the aviation theme, a VR flight simulation recently earned qualification for real-life pilot training. Loft Dynamics received the world's first Level 3 qualification of a virtual reality flight sim training device for Airbus H125 helicopters. This allows pilots to execute license and operator proficiency checks under European Union Aviation Safety Agency regulations. Although flight sims aren't new, using virtual reality headsets adds another level of realism to these systems, and they say it is particularly effective for allowing pilots to experience various immersive adverse condition scenarios and emergency situations without risk. Xiaomi showed off their wireless augmented reality glasses prototype at the Mobile World Congress recently too. Specs are a little thin, but the company says the glasses come with two micro OLED displays, each with 58 pixels per degree. No word on the FOV, but they say that the lenses are electrochromic and can switch between AR and blacked out VR modes. Another interesting aspect mentioned in the press release is a self-developed silicon oxygen anode battery that's used to power the device. This newer battery technology has been used by the company with a few of its recent phone releases. And finally, X-Ray Glass showed off their own augmented reality glasses which add real-time subtitles to conversations. These were originally designed for users with hearing issues, but they have been expanding the capabilities of the glasses by now adding real-time translation into nine different languages. And in keeping with the trend of integrating chat AIs into products, the company announced at the MWC that its platform now works directly with ChatGPT, allowing users to treat it almost like a home assistant so they can ask questions and receive instant answers via subtitles. Thanks for watching. That's it for this week. Stay up to date with the latest technology trends by subscribing to this channel or visit mosfet.net for more news and feeds.